a, a, a subculture within a larger culture and never deteriorate and protect yourself from what's out there if you can maintain your traditions, if you can maintain your values. And so it's the bar mitzvah, the bas mitzvah, and it's the family ties that has been has enabled Judaism to survive and not become a, a religion assimilated by other countries. They can coexist in any nation because they are able to hold on to church and family. After church and family, you have education. What's happened in the United States is we have yielded territory. You guys know this, but this picture puts it together. Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Christian universities and schools for the training of men and women of God. You can't even be a Christian on the campus hardly in those places anymore. I know I was protested and I just showed up to do one speech at Harvard. Because if you surrender these territories, here's what Jesus said. If the house is swept clean but not filled, it becomes seven times worse. And what's happening in America is there are seven institutional houses. Christianity once swept clean, but we didn't occupy it. And now we're watching in the place of Christianity a hostile takeover against Christians. Education from, uh, from uh, kindergarten all the way to, uh, to college. Uh, the laws that are shaped by the courts come from the government. So you've got government and you've got laws right there in the middle. Media, we just found out. What a powerful and dangerous thing it is when the press that is supposed to be the instrument of telling the truth on something becomes the ideologic instrument of a political party. So now you have media, laws and government, education, shaping the American narrative. And then you bring in arts and entertainment. So this would be everything from sports to, uh, to movies, to film, to plays. And this is the other insidious thing about what's happened in America. Progressives, those that have an ideology for America, it's almost like a counterfeit religion. It shows up everywhere. You can't watch a football game without finding a progressive agenda being protested in your face. So everywhere you look, you're going to start to see this philosophy coming over America in order to reshape America. And then you have business over here, which is your financial sector, advertising, marketing, and business. As business goes, all seven go, because that's the economic backbone of any nation. There you have the seven mountains that shape culture, the seven mind molders that have to be discipled. What have we done, and where have we made a mistake? What the church has done is, to a great extent, it's walled itself off from engaging those other areas. Where are the gates of hell located? Have you ever thought about that? I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Where are the gates located? The gates of hell are located wherever influence is consolidated. The gates of hell are over government. That's why there's warfare over presidential elections and over Supreme Court appointments. Because Satan is interested in having influence. Wherever there's a gate of influence, their hell is going to try to occupy who is sitting at that gate. Do you remember what uh, the devil said to Jesus in Luke chapter 4 when he tempted him in the wilderness? He said, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, and he said, all this has been given to me, and I give it to whom I will. That's a fascinating statement. That means that the devil takes an intense interest in who is occupying world kingdoms who are sitting at the seat who are sitting at the gates of influence i suggest to you that the gates over government the gates over media the gates over arts the gates over business education your communities and even in the church satan is intensely interested in who has influence at those gates and if it's up to him he will plant people that will be subversive at the location of those gates see how that works so what does a Donald Trump do? Well, basically what Donald Trump does, where you have a rigged game, where you have a system where big business is collaborating with government, and you've got your academia and your media all lined up, and it's one incestuous relationship kind of moving along with one idea or agenda. A wrecking ball is something that comes in that has no prior commitment to anyone other than the best interest of the country itself. That's why he's a threat. That's why he is an institutional adversary. 
because he's not in anybody's pocket. He has no previous agreement to anyone except issue by issue what's in the best interest of the country as a whole.